Thank you. Thank you very much, Vipul, for the introduction. Thank you, uh, Shalini, Dr. Rajiv Chawla, and the entire team for having me here today. Uh, interesting debate, uh, which we are going to have. I also welcome my co-speaker and opponent, Dr. Srinivas Murthy, uh, here. So the, the first thought that came to my mind when I thought or read this topic or when I'm uh, talking today is that it's such an irony that we are more than 100 diabetologists since yesterday and today attending this mega event. We are talking, we are about diabetes, we have been managing diabetes for the last you know, so many decades, all of us, our bread and butter is controlling blood sugars and today we have to debate whether controlling blood sugars is the first step or is more important or whether controlling or whether uh, targeting ASCVD is more important. And so that is what my, uh, I am a diabetologist, my, what I know is controlling sugars best and I think that is what I am going to talk about, that uh, glucocentric approach is something which we require as the first step when a patient walks into us. So let me paint you a picture of this uh, individual who comes to us and came to the OPD for the first time with an HB mm -hmm. of 9.5. He's a 42-year-old male. His BMI is 26. His uh, blood pressure is mod moderate. And he uh, walks in with his lot of hopes and he comes into Dr. Srinivas Murthy's clinic uh, asking that he needs his blood sugars to be well controlled. So uh, my question is, will you focus on his blood glucose or are you going to think about what is going to happen after 20, 30 years, whether he's lined up with an MI, whether he's going to land up with a cardiovascular event. So what should I do with him now or whether the first concern is to bring down his HbA1c from his 9.5 to the target A1c of less than 7 is what is uh, the question that is going to be in the mind. Why this approach? Well, everything is glucocentric if you look at uh, the, uh, what we are doing in our practice, uh, controlling blood sugars is glucocentric. A patient coming to us with the hopes of bringing down his blood sugar is glucocentric. What he's paying us for is glucocentric. So why not? Why are we even talking about this? What we know is that if we bring down the HbA1c by even 1%, we know that diabetes-related deaths can decrease by 21%. We know that the microvascular complications by, can reduce by 37%. We know that myocardial infarction comes down by 14%. The UK PDS clearly taught us so many things. It's an old trial, no doubt, but it is still the most important trial for, a, for us when we are treating a patient with type 2 diabetes. We know that there was there was the initial part of UKPDS where the intensive arm was compared to the conventional arm. The intensive arm was well controlled or better controlled as compared to the conventional arm. And then they were followed up for a period of 10 years post UKPDS also. And what it showed clearly was that the reduction in deaths from diabetes reduced by 21%. The heart attacks came down by 14%. The microvascular complications came down by 37%. And peripheral vascular disease came down by 43% by just 1% mere reduction in HbA1c. If you look at the long-term study of UKPDS also, the macrovascular complications also came down even after 10 years in the intensive group as compared to the conventional group. What, do, what does it tell us? That it tells us something about the metabolic memory. Metabolic memory is something which has been associated directly to vascular diseases. If you look at various trials like Accord, Advanced, VADT, UKPDS, DCCT, Addict, some may have not shown any benefit in the initial part of the study, but even after follow-up, after 10 years, these studies have shown a reduction in terms of micro as well as macrovascular complications. What it tells us is that hyperglycemia, the initial reduction of hyperglycemia becomes the most important aspect. There is the accumulation of superoxide anions, there is the oxidative stress, there is the product and the accumulation of advanced glycation end products that happens over a period of time. For the longer duration of time the hyperglycemia is in our body, the more chances that the body is exposed to the advanced glycation end products and thereby which further leads to the increased incidence of vascular diseases. And therefore, Friends, uh, first target is to bring down blood sugars. First target is to control the patient better in the initial years. If you look at the Steno2 data, again, Steno2 was a study which looked at multifactorial intervention. And then it, it tried to show that if you uh, do multifactorial intervention, uh, controlling the blood sugars, lipids, cholesterol, blood pressure, whether you are able to bring down the primary composite endpoint of cardiovascular death, of stroke, of amputations or surgery. And clearly, again, the Steno2 study 
where the HbA1c target was kept at less than 6.5, the cholesterol was well maintained to less than 175, the systolic diastolic were well controlled in the intensive group. It showed almost a 53% relative risk reduction in any kind of CV event and overall an improvement of CV outcomes. So telling us again that bring down the blood sugar in a better way or for, uh, initially helps us in the long run. If you look at the microvascular component in the Steno2 study, again, it clearly showed the incidence of nephropathy, retinopathy and autonomic neuropathy. All three were relatively decreased by almost more than 55 to 60 percent in all the three. The only benefit did not show was in terms of diabetic neuropathy. If you look at the DCCT EDIC data again, DCCT again was a study done in type 1 patients and EDIC is the follow-up study of DCCT which uh, was seen even after 10 years of the, the, of the trial got over. Again, comparing the intensive versus the conventional group. If you look at the effect of, in, uh, of intensive therapy, there was a difference of almost 2% in HbA1c between the intensive arm and the conventional arm. A reduction of retinopathy was clearly seen as early as 4 years in, this ed in the EDIC follow-up data. And after 10 years itself, the EDIC data showed that the incidence of retinopathy was significantly reduced by more than 50%. If you look at the nephropathy data at 7 years, again showing an improvement at the end of 7 years. And neuropathy in data again showing an improvement at the end of 8 years as well as 10 years. So what the EDIC study taught us again that the initial few years where the HbA1c is high and if you try to bring, out, bring it down fast, clearly it helps us to reduce the microvascular complications as well as the macrovascular complications. The cardiovascular data of EDIC study came at 17 years, so it's after a considerable period of time, but again it showed that a 1% reduction in HbA1c was associated with almost a 21% reduction in the risk of CV where there was a reduction of calcium score seen, there is a reduction in the myocardial infarction rate seen, as well as heart failure seen. So clearly, in the initial years becomes very, very important. Intensive diabetes therapy overall, we know, has a long-term beneficial effects on the risk of CBD and there Now, the question in today's times comes in this cardiocentric area that we are talking about, that how can we reduce the CV risk per se in the type 2 diabetes by a glucocentric approach, whether we will be able to reduce the CV event that is there or no. The answer is clear. You need to reduce the blood sugars. You need to use good agents, agents which will reduce the glycemic variability. We know that glycemic variability is a known factor to cause cardiovascular disease. The trials which were done in the past were done with older drugs. They were drugs which we can watch were causing hypoglycemia. So reduction in hypoglycemia is one of the third important factor that will help us in reducing the CV risk. So it is not per se in this CVOT area that it is not only the drugs, the newer drugs or reduction of AVCD happens because of these only. If you try to control the blood sugars well, if you try to reduce the glycemic variability well, and if you prevent hypoglycemia with better drugs, clearly we are able to reduce the CV risk. A meta-analysis done with almost 100 in, uh, of 100 studies showed that fasting blood glucose more than 126 had an increased risk of coronary artery diseases. IGT and elevated HbA1c1 about 5.7 has been associated with an increased CV risk. And an increased blood glucose concentration in the general population per se confers a population to a higher risk of CVD. And therefore, individualized management, targeting the A1c, bringing it down according with the better drugs is the need of the R. Now, if you look at the impact of intensive therapy on the various trials, again, in the long term also, the microvascular complication reduction has been uniform for all the trials. Yes, ACCORD showed an increased rate of uh, deaths. My opponent will definitely talk about it. But it was primarily because of increased hypoglycemia, because of maybe the drug used in that to bring down sugar or to intensively manage was a sulfonylurea only and not the new, uh, newer present, more safer drugs. And, but overall, the cardiovascular disease reduction is seen in UKPDS, the mortality reduction is seen after 10 years, and the DCCT addict as well as the advance and VADT were more or less neutral in these terms. Now, let us imagine a child who is sick. A child who is sick but in, and is not able to appear in school in exams, has poor grades in school exams. When, what do we do for him? Are you not going to treat his illness first or are you just going to look after the school grades and whether you are going to try and correct the school grades first? Clearly, diabetes, the analogy stands true when we talk about the diabetes management itself. Hyperglycemia is a detrimental part of 
to cause cardiovascular diseases and if you control the sugars well if you target the patient well give him a safer therapy we are able to bring down the a1c with the proper drugs naturally we are going to avoid the ascvd risk which the patient has in the future so wouldn't your management be glucocentric in the first place is what i am asking now when we talk about prevention of cardiovascular disease we know that pathology the low grade inflammation the oxidative stress and are all endothelial dysfunctions are all the factors which causes atherogenesis in the long term but all these factors primarily are because of the direct effect of hyperglycemia in a patient with type 2 diabetes and if the hyperglycemia is well managed i don't think we need to worry about these factors in the long run hba1c reduction has been the gold standard for us if you look at the various meta analysis again done related to long term glycemic variability higher a1c variability was associated with increased macrovascular events as well as renal disease or cardiovascular diseases and more or less positively associated with micro and macrovascular complications and therefore reduction of hba1c with a better drugs is the need of the r and finally when we are talking about glucocentric management in today's times again a cost effectiveness always comes we know that india in india the patients are poor paying from their pocket and when you talk about uh, targeting a patient with ascvd management and no, not only going for glucocentric we are definitely increasing the burden on the pocket of the patient the cost of the treatment increases and we need to think about the financial burden also now when we talk about the ada 2022 algorithms or be it the rssdl algorithm or be it the ace algorithms what does it tell us it primarily is talking about bringing down the a1c initially the first line of therapy with metformin and lifestyle and targeting the a1c to less than 7 if you look at the ace guidelines also what does it tell us it it, it tells us to use drugs based on the a1c it does not tell us to use drugs primarily just to reduce ascvd but it tells us to bring depending on the a1c you start using one drug two drug or three drug and in fact if the a1c is high or more than 9 you you straight away go on with three drugs similarly the ada or the rssd guidelines is telling us to step wise add uh, the drugs if the a1c is not under control so friends hba1c and glycemic control still remains the criteria to intensify treatment and it is not only at ascvd based management what we know to summarize that no change per uh, overall in a patient subgroup intensive glycemic control may also decrease macrovascular complications hypoglycemia is a condition which we should be avoiding and and uh, in uh, but at the same time not at the expense of a poor glycemic control the weight increase experienced by patients with aggressive therapy is some is not a negative prognostic factor and it has been proved in studies that it does not increase the cardiovascular mortality therefore glucocentric as well as cardiocentric approaches both are necessary in a patient with diabetes adequate care of patients with diabetes must involve early diagnosis of hypoglycemia treating the risk factors as well as identification of patients with established heart diseases and considering the number of patients with diabetes being increasing let us understand that a sound approach a synthesis approach where glycemic control is as important as control of the cardiovascular risk factors should remain as a target to be achieved so there is no doubt in my mind that we need to be glucocentric when we talk we are dealing with a patient we need to bring down his blood sugars well avoid hypoglycemia and treat him and we will automatically be avoiding the complications in the long run but let us understand that a patient who's coming to us for the first time our aim is to control his blood sugars well and thereby reduce his micro and macrovascular complications that could happen later on in life so glucocentric approach friends will always be the first step that we'll be initially talking about or dealing with in our patients thank you very much